September 23rd Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Hebrews chapter 7 from the New Testament Now this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham as he was returning from defeating the kings and blessed him. To him also Abraham apportioned a tithe of everything. His name first means king of righteousness, then king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, he has neither beginning of days nor end of life, but is like the Son of God, and he remains a priest for all time. But see how great he must be if Abraham the patriarch gave him a tithe of his plunder, and those of the sons of Levi who received the priestly office have authorization, according to the law, to collect a tithe from the people, that is, from their fellow countrymen, although they too are descendants of Abraham. But Melchizedek, who does not share their ancestry, collected a tithe from Abraham and blessed the one who possessed the promise. Now without dispute, the inferior is blessed by the superior, and in one case tithes are received by mortal men, while in the other by him who is affirmed to be alive. And it could be said that Levi himself, who receives tithes, paid a tithe through Abraham, for he was still in his ancestor Abraham's loins when Melchizedek met him. So if perfection had in fact been possible through the Levitical priesthood, for on that basis the people received the law, what further need would there have been for another priest to arise, said to be in the order of Melchizedek and not in Aaron's order? For when the priesthood changes, a change in the law must come as well. Yet the one these things are spoken about belongs to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever officiated at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord is descended from Judah, yet Moses said nothing about priest in connection with that tribe. And this is even clearer if another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become a priest not by a legal regulation about physical descent, but by the power of an indestructible life. For here is the testimony about him. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. On the one hand, a former command is set aside because it is weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, a better hope is introduced through which we draw near to God. And since this was not done without a sworn affirmation, for the others have become priests without a sworn affirmation, but Jesus did so with a sworn affirmation by the one who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Accordingly, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. And the others who became priests were numerous, because death prevented them from continuing in office but he holds his priesthood permanently since he lives forever. So he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. For it is indeed fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separate from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need to do every day what those priests do, to offer sacrifices first for their own sins, and then for the sins of the people, since he did this in offering himself once for all. For the law appoints as high priest men subject to weakness, but the word of solemn affirmation that came after the law appoints a son made perfect forever. God, we have so many examples of how we should live our life in the Bible. And we compare ourselves to a lot of people in this earth. Well, I do that better than so-and-so, or at least I don't do that. But just as this chapter is talking about, our goal is to always be looking towards your son, Jesus, who lived a sinless life um, and did amazing, incredible things here on earth. We know that we'll never get to that point, but that's the person who we should be comparing our lives to. In this particular chapter, uh, they're talking about Melchizedek, who uh, kind of pops in and out. Uh, we see him in Genesis and Psalms, and that's about it. And so just a complete little tiny blip on the radar. Um, doesn't even mention kind of timelines of, of when he was born, when he was, died, who his parents were, anything. Just this little blip about him. But that he was, was so 
honorable that he was compared to to Jesus uh, himself in this particular chapter. And even if somebody out there, now we know Melchizedek wasn't perfect, but he he tried to do all the right things for all the right reasons. And his example wasn't his fellow man, but his example was what he was called to do. And at that time, it was the Mosaic Law, to living up to the Mosaic Law. And even that was flawed because uh, humans were involved and, you know, we messed that up as well. So even if Melchizedek could do it through an example of human law, think what we could do if we constantly had your son and his examples in front of us. And if we were constantly comparing us on a timeline of how close we were to his example uh, in our lives and here on earth, and how much that would glorify you, how much that would reflect your love and your kindness and your grace to other people, if that was our example, instead of the idols we use on TV or people who are friends or people who are enemies, quote unquote enemies, um, we so get caught up in this comparing ourselves to other people for good or for bad. And this chapter is really clear that it's not who the ultimate authority is on good and bad. And it's definitely not who we should be looking up to. That if, if we ourselves are just this tiny, tiny, tiny blip on the radar, just like Melchizedek, that what an incredible honor it would be to have somebody say they they were honorable they were truthful they were kind to other people yes they messed up yes they were human but gosh they were just a good person and truly tried to live their life according to how god wanted them to god help us to strive always to that level of expectation rather than settling for the expectations and commonality of the people around us here on earth and the examples that are shown to us here in this world in your son's name we pray. Amen.